Laval is one of those decks that had its moment in the sun, largely because of excellent synergy with a few incredibly powerful cards, allowing it to make plays that produced very favorable winning conditions. However, outside of those cards, the deck in general was rather disappointing and weak, and when the most important combo card in the deck, Rekindling, was, in my opinion, justifiably limited, the deck somewhat fell apart. The deck attempted to hold on for a while replacing Rekindling with Soul Charge, but when Soul Charge also met the same ban list fate, most, understandably, seemed to just give up on the vaults. Interestingly, though, with some of the newer cards that have come into existence recently, can Laval scrap together a form of resurgence? Hmm, let's see. Starting off, in my opinion, Laval Judgment Lord is one of the worst boss monsters in the game. Its attack is somewhat subpar for a two-tribute monster. Its effect is rather pathetic, both because Laval's don't have effective synergy with the Banish Zone outside of Cannon and Lance Lord, and it costs the attack of Judgment Lord. Also, it strips resources from other, typically better playmaking involving banishing, and it clogs the hand relatively easily. While it is possible, it's not really worth summoning via card like Circle of the Fire Kings. If it were better, maybe you could combo it with Sword of the Seven Stars because you could run more copies, but overall, it's really just not worth the time and effort to run. While Laval Lancelord is not a bad card, it just does do enough good to warrant running. The return of a banished card to the hand effect is really only meaningful for a for a banished cannon from a standpoint of the selection of the Laval monsters, and other possible fire targets are more difficult to banish, and it still requires a combo piece to destroy the card, because relying on the opponent to do it for you is incredibly unlikely. Laval Burner is one of those if-only cards. It is not a bad card, because anything with an innate special summoning effect gets bonus points, and achieving Burner's condition is rather easy. However, due to some of the unfortunate conditions associated with other Laval monsters, Burner has reduced combo potential. Burner can be a nice card at 1, but I find some other choices better fit my preferences. Burner probably should have been better, but certain restrictions beyond its control limit its value. Prominence Molten Swordsman is one of those cards that has a decent cause, but no real punch to its end resulting effect. The 300 attack until the end phase is rather bad in this era of Yu-Gi-Oh, despite being quick play. Heck, Prominence does not even have Laval in its name, making it even worse due to a reduced consistency. Laval Warrior was quality when it first came out, but has slowly been power crept and left on an island in the Laval deck build due to its effect not having really meaningful combo potential. Like Burner, it is definitely plausible as a one-copy card, but I prefer to fit the deck spot another way. Laval Flogus lost a lot of its role, if it ever really had one, when Rekindling was limited to one. A 300 attack increase is far too light to be valuable despite the graveyard dumping potential of this deck, because it's lost a significant aspect of its swarming capacity. In its Poisar heyday, Laval Magnum Cannoneer was a critical card. However, with the loss of the general Quasar engine for Laval, Cannoneer has obviously lost some of its meaning, for on its own, its effect is of limited value, and while its attack is fine, it is nothing impressive. However, because of its non-tuner standing, 200 defense stat, and its Laval name, which allows it to work with Handmaiden, and the existence of Rekindling, it isn't banned, it's still only limited to one, this card is still worth running. I run two copies. Since the Quasar strategy has basically been eliminated as a consistent and primary option to the Lavals, at least in my opinion, Laval Cannon, which was always a strong card, has become the best Laval monster one can run. 1600 attack is serviceable, it's a warrior so it can be searched via Rota, and it should net a plus one whenever normal summoned. That will commonly result in the strong extra deck play. Three copies are pretty much mandatory in basically every Laval variant. Laval Blaster seems to want to be a faster version of Curry Bandit, but does not have that useful side effect of scooping an excavated spell or trap card back to your hand. The lack of this spell trap addition effect is actually quite devastating to the deck because Blaster really doesn't do anything meaningful outside of this dump effect. The attack game might have been interesting if this card had a base of 1800 plus, or if the gain was 500 instead of 200, but that's certainly not the case. Overall, if milling excavating interests you in a Laval deck, just run Curry Bandit instead. 
Kayan, the Master Magma Blacksmith, is similar to Flogus. While its attack gain is a little bit higher and its effect can be a little more controlled, there's just not enough of a reason to run this card as field-based attack gain is incredibly substandard for this deck. If Laval Miller received its effect when sent to the, from the field to the graveyard, period, it would be interesting. However, needing to be destroyed as a result of battle and with rekindling at 1, it's just not worth it. Last year, Laval Lakeside Lady had lost a lot of its power because so many face-down spell traps were chainable. However, now the meta has shifted again, where the summons negators and battle responders, i.e. the Solemns and Mirror Force variants, are far and away the most popular forms of face-down back row. Lakeside gets to flex her power again. Also, Lakeside is a nice card in combination with Cannon, Donetta Free Plus One, largely with the monster that accompanies Lakeside to the Banished Zone that will commonly set up a deeper play, usually a Synchro. I run two copies. Laval Kotal is one of those cards that I like running one copy of over a card like Burner. The innate special summon ability has the exact same conditions of Burner, but the tuning capacity gives Kotal the tip of the hat over Burner because level 6 synchros are not difficult to make in this deck, and the ability to bring out Kotal to sink into a crystal wing off of that level 6 synchro definitely has its positive moments. Also, 1300 attack for a level 2 with an innate special summoning ability is rather rare, and it's a nice side benefit to getting in some extra damage. Laval Forest Sprite is not a strong card, and has a rather depressing effect in the sense that it must hit the graveyard from the field to activate. However, because it's a level 2 tuner with the Laval name and only 200 defense, I run one copy for some of the holes it can fill when using rekindling, and the fact that it is a target for handmaiden's effect. Largely, Sprite is a strategic decision based on increasing synchro versatility over my experience of play. I will admit, though, I really do not like including it in this deck. In the past, Laval Volcano Handmaiden was mandatory at three copies. But with Rekindling and Soul Charge at 1, and Laval Vol Chain banned, and the general Quasar strategy somewhat abandoned now, Handmaiden has lost a level of its importance in my eyes. The fact that this card can very easily miss its timing, which is incredibly annoying, increases the detriment of drawing this card. I actually only run two copies, because in my opinion, without that, we're gonna go for Quasar here strategy to the deck. Running 3 just doesn't have the impact and necessity it once did. Soaring Eagle above the Searing Land is one of those quirky cards that does not really fit well in most Laval builds, but can be somewhat interesting in its own specific deck. However, this deck is not one of those combo-specific quirky Soaring Eagle decks, so no copy of Soaring Eagle. Up until the most recent meta change, Laval Stenon definitely had potential due to its target negation aspect. However, now with so many people abandoning cards that target, it almost has no real value in this meta except to take up extra deck space. Lavalval Dragon was once considered a less important Lavalval monster, for its Bujin Yamato effect was overshadowed by the general speed and versatility associated with cards like Conduction Field and Lavalval Chain. However, this overshadowing was never really fair in my opinion, and now with the availability of some rather nasty level 8 synchros like Cyframe Lord Omega and Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, Dragon, greater chance to shine. The vast majority of the time, if you get this guy on the field with any Laval monster in your hand, you can make Crystal Wing rather easily. If you have three different named Lavals in your graveyard, just search for Kotal, then dump the other Laval monster, special summon Kotal using its innate special summoning ability, then summon Crystal Wing. I run one copy, it's level 6 standing also helps as one of the most common synchro summons made for this deck overall. Laval the Greater is a little better in this meta over Stenon, but losing a card from the hand on summons limits its summons versatility, and while 2400 attack and its anti-destruction effect is solid, it has lost some steam in the current meta from a standpoint of importance because it doesn't do much else other than be a 2400 beater. Too bad it can't protect itself from battle as well. Running one copy can be interesting, but I choose to use that extra disc spot in a different way. Laval Dual Slasher can be a nice single copy side deck card to deal with those unexpected decks that run heavy on defense and stalling, but outside of that, 
not really good for much else in this meta. While Levolvol Dragon cannot recycle Levolvol Extra Deck Monsters because it returns to the main deck, it is still a nice card to help increase efficiency associated with Conduction Field, as well as eliminating certain Extra Deck and High Level Opponent threat, especially off of a Soul Charge or a Rekindling, before upgrading it into another Synchro Monster. I run one copy. Levolvol Chain is banned, and probably should, always should be banned, because with time, its versatility will just make it better and better and better, and Ignis is just a horrible card that should be avoided. Molten Conduction Field was a critical card in Quasar Build, and still is a critical card because of its significant deck-thinning advantage and setting up combination plays for the deck. I run three copies despite potential inefficiencies associated with the strategy. Fortunately, Levolvol Dragon allows you to lessen the rate of inefficiency by returning hand main, which not surprisingly is the best card to send in tandem with another Levol monster. Searing Firewall just does not seem to have enough of a punch to validate its use, and the general lack of banish to graveyard synergy in Levols hurts combo potential. I run one copy of Dust Flame Blast as a general mass field clearer. Boy, it would have been nice if this card allowed the player to remove X number of Laval monsters with different names to destroy an equal number of cards on the field instead of just being an all or nothing card, but eh, quibble quibble. When utilized properly, Dust Flame can certainly ruin your opponent's day, even in this somewhat anti-destruction meta we currently play. There is nothing wrong with Molten Whirlwind Wall but its effect is just lacking due to the overall consistency disparity of the Laval deck. This card without Conduction Field is basically a dead draw a vast majority of the time. Whirlwind Flame is usually inferior to Flameville Counter, and in a sense both represent a missing combo link in Laval's between Graveyard to Banish Zone and Banish Zone to Graveyard. Without that effective way to return Banish Monsters to the Graveyard outside of cards like Miracle Dig or Burial from Another Dimension, both of these cards are a step down in my mind over a card like Universal Providence, if one wants to play some less than standard negation. Not much needs to be said about Rekindling, for anyone familiar with the card knows how good it is. If it's activated and not immediately stopped, the probability that the player who activated it winning increases dramatically. I obviously run the one allowable copy. For the non Laval monsters, I like running three copies of Red Resonator. The only thing that would have made this card better in this deck if it was named Laval Red Resonator, a level 2 tuner that can special summon a level 4 or lower monster to commonly make same turn synchro plays is significantly beneficial for this deck. Its defense being 200 also makes it a rekindling target, further expanding its usefulness. Finally, its special summoning life point gain ability definitely has its moment both in Abyss Summoning and Rekindling or Soul Charge based summoning. To pair with the three copies of Red Resonator, I run one copy of Synchron Resonator to aid in making these more precise synchro plays, most notably Scarlight to Abyss. And it also produces another search target for Resonator Call, increasing that card's versatility. Furthermore, I actually like to running three copies of Reborn Tengu in this deck for field control, deck thinning, and is a nice level 4 non-tuner aid for synchro summoning, especially for taking the pressure off having non-tuners in the graveyard for a rekindling or soul charge. Finally, I run one copy of Royal Firestorm Guards for dumping four pyros to the graveyard in Laval's is not difficult, and guards can net a two draws as well as being a 1700 level 4 non-tuner. Guards can also help reduce some of the inefficiency in running three conduction fields by returning some handmaidens to the deck. For the spells, I run one copy of Regeki and one copy of Soul Charge as the general staples. Due to Cannon being a warrior and a nice combo piece in the deck, I run one copy of Reinforcement of the Army as well as two copies of Resonator Call for the Resonators. For draw power, I run one copy of Upstart Goblin and one copy of One Day of Peace because Laval is definitely a combo deck that cannot float. I run one copy of Instant Fusion for Norden. Incidentally, Instant Fusion is what replaces the third copy of Handmaiden. Due to the importance of rekindling in this deck, I run one copy of Gold Sarcophagus. Yes, you have to wait until the second turn after its activation, but having to wait such a short period of time realistically to getting rekindling into your hand is definitely a trade-off I'm willing to make. Also, another newer spell that makes this deck a little more interesting is Left Arm Offering. More than likely, the cost of only having to banish two cards from the hand for Banishing War can typically be worked around by players who plan well. To grab a Rekindling that can be immediately utilized is one of the few single cards in the game that is actually worth the cost of Left Arm, as Rekindling can end the game on that same turn. Finally, for the traps, I run one Solemn Warning, 
three drowning mirror forests, and one vanity's emptiness. As I find that Laval's, they need quality board clearance, and that's what drowning mirror forests provide, or entire shutdown clearance, and that's what vanity emptiness does. For the remaining extra deck, I run one Elder Entity Norden, one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. This is obviously the new Quasar for this deck because it's a lot easier to summon. One copy of Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier, one copy of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, one copy of Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, one copy of Cyframe Lord Omega, one Black Rose Dragon, one HTS Cyhemoth. This is probably one of the most underrated synchro cards in the game, especially in this meta. Two copies of Stardust Charge Warrior for draw power, one copy of TG Hyper Librarian for more draw power, and one copy of High Speed Roid Chambara. It's a great OTK card off of the rekindling. And finally, one Abyss Dweller. Overall, the biggest problem is that Laval seemed to be a deck that designers almost wanted to have quality combinations by moving cards between the graveyard and the banished zone, but forgot to give the deck quality cards for that banished return aspect outside of canon. Lancelord too, but Lancelord isn't really that good. However, without these associated cards that facilitate this back and forth strategy, the deck basically became a rekindling or bust type design. While Laval still needs some more focus support to really be competitive, the additions of Red Resonators and Left Arm Offering have moved the deck back to the rank of respectable. Well, that's my Laval deck. Thank you for your attention and your time. I'm out.